Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm currently a Space Systems Optimization Engineer and previously I have just finished my Masters at the University of Cambridge where I studied a Masters in Maths and prior to that I spent three years studying Mathematics at the University of Leeds. So I am a bit of a Maths nerd really, which is why in this video I'm going to be talking to you about how I revise for my exams. So yeah, just going to talk to you about some advice that I'd give to any Maths students that are going to revise for their exams and hopefully you will find this video useful. So a bit of background, I actually graduated from the University of Leeds with the King Award, which was awarded to the student that obtained the highest grade in applied mathematics. So I came top of the year in applied mathematics at my undergrad and came top of the year in all of the fluid dynamics modules that I studied during my time there, as well as the final year dissertation research project. So I got top of the class in my dissertation. A bit of a side note, I've made a video talking about how I wrote my dissertation and, and advice on that, so if you're interested in that then check that out. So I just thought I'd tell you some tricks and tips of how to revise as a math student. The first thing that I'm going to talk about is basically how you can make your lecture notes revisable. So the first thing that I would do is I would go through all of my lecture notes and I would turn them into cue cards. Now this is something that I've had kind of a bit of a mixed reception with. I found cue cards to be incredibly helpful just to remember the lecture note material so what I would do is I would sit down and this was something that I did during the revision period now what I would probably have done differently is I would have probably made cue cards as I went throughout my course I would when it came to revising the material for one lecture I would have made the cue cards then just because when it came to revising I spent probably a bit too long of a time making these cue cards when really I should have had them like there already. So during the revision period, I would go through a module and I would make cue cards on everything in that module. As long as I can get it on a cue card, I would put it on a cue card because then I would actively recall them afterwards. For the maybe proofs and theorems that were a little bigger than a cue card, I would just put them on a piece of paper and then actively recall that. But I would also do it on a cue card with just the final answer at the end just to check that I, you know, I got it right. Now again, this might seem quite confusing to people, but it was just, it helped me so much. I wrote cue cards on everything that I possibly could. I just, just went through the lecture note material and was so exhaustive with what I put on cue cards so that if at any point in the exam something came up, I would know it because I would have actively recalled it. I just found it a nice way of splitting up the lecture notes. Going into an exam and thinking I have to remember this entire set of lecture notes can be quite scary but if you've separated it into cue cards and you can do those cue cards it worked amazingly for me <laughs> i'll be completely honest and i was able to remember a lot of the stuff that were, was in the lecture notes because of my cue cards so in the next section i'm obviously going to talk a little bit about how i use my cue cards and what i do with them so yeah that's that's what i did in terms of the cue card side of things something that i adopted in my master's year was it <laughs> it was basically i took the entire set of lecture notes and I put each chapter, sometimes more than one chapter, on an A4 piece of paper. Now I'll show you a picture of what this looks like. This way what I did was I put, say for astrophysical fluid dynamics on my masters, I had nine chapters, I put each chapter on a piece of paper and then I would actively recall that piece of paper. So when it came to revising, I'd have it, have that, I'd have this piece of paper, I'd cover it, write as much as I could, remember from that and then fill in the gaps. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when I get on to how I revise. But the most important thing is being able to just re remember things from the lecture notes. So this is why I did cue cards and why I then condensed it into like one piece of paper per chapter so that I could then actively recall that when it came to my revision because it's okay doing loads of past papers, loads of questions, but sometimes in exams they will literally just say, prove this and they think it's trivial to you because it's just in the lecture notes so it's easy. Again, making your lecture note material revisable is something very very important before you even start planning your revision. Okay, so let's say we've done that, we've made our lecture note material revisable, we've got cue cards, active recall pages, whatever it is that you think is the best way for you to do active recall. Again, I'd just like to to, to say that cue cards might not be for everyone, it works incredibly well for me, but if you have another way of being able to actively recall your lecture notes, do it that way. If it works for you, then do it. But let's say we're there, we've got 
our all our lecture note material is in some sort of revisable we can revise it we can actively recall it what i would then do is make a plan so that's point number two and that is planning so i would make a plan i would make it kind of a rough plan of what i wanted to get done by each week so at my undergrad for my christmas exams i had i think about four weeks and the idea is that say i had four modules i'd spend a week on each of the modules and make sure that by th day three of each of the modules I'd have done all the cue cards and I was then testing myself and doing past papers and example sheets uh, and also take into account how the modules are weighted so split your exam revision time according to the weighting of each of the modules and also maybe split it according to how easy you're finding something and how difficult you're finding something else that's you know you can also overlap a little bit with that for modules that i found incredibly easy i would spend less time on them because i wanted to focus on the modules that i found harder but again just find the right balance for you and just get a rough plan of of what you want to do when because when it comes to the exams you'll have covered everything that you wanted to do so for me what i would do is split them so that I've got roughly how many days I want to spend on each of my exams. Then within that module, I would look at how many example sheets there were and how many past papers there were. And then within that, I would say, I would kind of sub point, like I want to do example sheet one, two, three, four, yeah, past paper one, two, three. So this might, if you are a math student, for me at undergrad, I had three past papers in first year two in second year, then one in third year. For some reason, they like to just decrease them when you got, I, d I think it just made it harder. I have no idea why they did that, but anyway. And then on my masters, I had like 20 past papers per module, which was crazy. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't get a chance to do them all. And I think that was just down to what I'd done previously at my undergrad, not thinking I had that many past papers. So it was quite, it was quite a lot to, to do on my masters. But what I would do is just list what I wanted to do and then split those days into, you know, how much time I'm going to spend, what days I'm going to spend on my example sheets, what days I'm going to spend on past papers. Uh, and do it that way. So that was kind of how I planned. Again, very important point, don't overestimate what you can do because that will lead to a lot of undue stress and you don't need that before your exams. Now, this point, point number three, is gonna be revising the lecture note material. I'll talk about example sheets and past papers uh, on, in points four and five, but this point is talking about how we, you know, how I use the cue cards that I've created to revise. As I said, it's very important to understand the lecture note material before going into the exams. What I would do is usually maybe for a day, I would just spend actively recalling the cue cards. It depends really, you know, this, you can change this according to how many days you've got to revise. But for me, I would start with creating the cue cards, testing myself on the cue cards so I know roughly what the lecture note material is about. Then I'd move on to the example sheets and past papers. But what I would do is every single day, I would make sure I'm doing some sort of active recall. And for me at my undergrad, that was just doing the cue cards. Uh, and what I would do is I would create like three different piles and one pile would be, okay, easy, got that. Almost got there, like it's semi-okay and did not get at all. And then I would kind of recycle the cards in a way that I would be doing more of the ones that I didn't understand so that it would, I would drill them into my memory because you're, if what, if what you're doing is taking all of the cue cards and then just doing them over and over and over, you're wasting time on the things that you know that are just already there. So I would focus on the ones that I didn't get and then I'd recycle and, and do it again. Don't worry if you can't get every single cue card. One massive thing that I learned as soon as I got to uni was you don't need to know every single thing that's in the lecture notes. I remember reading a book uh, and I mentioned it on my channel. It's like the book that I recommend for math students to read. And it was this professor saying, you know, 70% is a first for a reason. You don't need to know absolutely everything. So it's okay if you don't remember every single one of the cue cards. I would recommend making sure you've solidified the course content before trying to do a past paper in time conditions because you'll find it very hard if you don't know the material. So that's why cue cards really helped me because if I didn't understand a particular area, I would just cue card it over and over till I got it and then sit a past paper in time conditions. Now that's the cue card side of things. In terms of what I did on my masters when I had my pieces of paper per chapter, Essentially what I would do, and usually it'd be the first thing in the morning as well, I would just take a chapter, have a look at it, cover it over and actively recall as much as I possibly could from that chapter. Then I would go over and I would fill in the blanks. Now, this was something that it was a little bit kind of harder because for me, I felt the cue cards were almost just just there in my memory. If if someone said, state the Navier-Stokes equations, very simple example, but I could just do it because it was on a cue card. With the kind of having the piece of paper, I felt I was associating it more with where the words were on the paper rather than just having them in my brain, which is fine, like it, it still worked. I didn't feel it was as efficient as 
the cue cards. But that being said, it still helped. I still was able to just regurgitate material and just, if someone said to me, write everything that was in chapter five of astrophysical fluid dynamics or write everything that was in chapter three of fluid dynamics of the climate, I could just do it and I would write it and I'd have it there in my memory. It seemed to take, for me, that took longer than doing the cue cards because the cue cards were kind of like fast, repetitive, like, yeah, I've got this, I've got this. Now, point number four is on how I would revise the example sheets. This, I don't have much to say really about this other than just redo the example sheets. So a lot of the time you can, you will look at example sheets you've already done and think, oh yeah, I remember that. But then you do them and then you're like, oh, actually, I, I don't remember them as well as I thought I did. So it's very important to spend time going over the example sheets. And also sometimes lecturers will give you additional revision material before the exam that's not an exam. So do them as well. I highly recommend just doing as many problems as you can in maths is, is very, very important. Okay, so I guess the most important, maybe one of the most important parts is number five, and that is doing the past papers. Firstly, this is very important because you understand a level of structure. In my first year and second year when I had quite a few past papers available to me, I could actually see the patterns that were happening you know year on year in the exam and you could kind of say okay question one is going to be on this question two is going to be on this unfortunately for my second year exams they went completely the opposite and it was like a completely new structure like completely different which is fine like sometimes those things happen but it's nice that if you have done some past papers you know the structure and then the exam you sit is similar to that structure you'll have got a good understanding of how to answer those questions and the style of questions that they ask in those types of exams so that's the first thing that's really important about doing past papers is one practicing the material but two understanding the structure that the lecturer will set for the exam i assume most people that are watching this video will agree with me and say of course i'm going to do the past papers that's one of the most important parts something that i did find quite useful at my undergrad uh, was obviously my masters i had 20 past papers for per exam but for my undergrad when i didn't have that many past papers to practice with I would Google previous past papers. I used, I think it was like Stu Doku was what I used like a couple of years ago, but they have, students will often post previous exam papers. So have a look at them, see if you can answer any of the questions on there and be aware that syllabus has changed from, from year to year. So there might be questions that you can't do. So don't worry if you can't do them. But if you do want some extra practice, have a look and see if there are any older, older past papers that are available online. Then I would sit the past papers in time conditions. So if it was a three hour exam, I'd try and get it done in three hours. Now it's okay if your first attempt, you can't get it all done in three hours or there's missing pieces. Just keep working, keep reviewing the material, keep practicing because eventually it'll get there. Another thing that I found quite useful, if you set up your environment very similar to how your exam is going to be, then you're more likely to do better in that exam just because you're so used to the surrounding. So I would make sure that when I sat my past paper, I would be in an environment very similar to my exam. So no electronic devices, you know, one water bottle, a few pens, that's literally just it and have it on paper. So if that's something that you might find useful, then give it a go. The last two points that I want to make on this is when you, when it comes to writing the past paper, don't make the mistake of thinking, oh yeah, like I'd explain this more in the exam. Sit the past paper as if it was an actual exam write clear, coherently. You want to write so that the person that's marking your exam understands what you're saying so that you can get as many marks as you possibly can. So when it comes to doing the past papers, make sure you have that approach. Yeah, it's very important to, to remember to just sit your past papers as, as similar to the exam as possible because then it leads to less stress in the exam. For me, I was someone that did stress a lot before exams. I uh, got quite nervous and quite anxious before my exams. So yeah, if you ask someone similar to that, then try adopt as many of these techniques as possible because it will help you a lot. And the final point that I wanted to make is revision is all about growth. It's okay if you don't understand a module. For me, I've had modules that have literally clicked like the day before. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna fail this, I'm gonna fail this. I literally have no idea what's going on. And then all of a sudden it just clicks. And I've spoken to other people that have had the same experience. So don't worry. Again, revision is all about growth. Just try the best that you can. That's the attitude that I've been brought up with by my parents and just by people around me is all you can do is do your best. Yeah, final piece of advice is if you are gonna sit some exams and you get a bit worried, just do your best because you will do amazing. And something I kind of like to remember is I've put in all this hard work and effort and now is the, my, my time to just show the examiner yeah, I know what I'm doing. Just have fun. Try, try have fun in the exam and just do your best. That's all you can do. I hope this video was useful. If there are any points that you want me to maybe elaborate on or expand on, feel free to comment down below. If you have any questions, comment down below. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.